comparing properties of linear functions given in different forms. Four different linear functions are represented below. Okay, so here's a graph of a linear function. We can tell it's linear because it's a straight line. Here's a table of a linear function, which if, if we wanted, we could check to see that the rate was constant, but because they're telling us it's linear, we can assume that. Here's a linear equation because it's y equals mx plus b. And here's just a description of a function where they give you the slope and they give you the y-intercept. So given these four different linear functions, we need to answer the following questions. The first question is, which function's graph is the steepest? Okay? When it asks about steepness, we want to be comparing slopes. Okay? So we're going to go back up and look at function 1 slope, function 2, function 3, and function 4 and decide which one's the steepest. Okay, my favorite way when I'm given a graph to find the slope is to just count my rise over my run. Okay, so if I'm trying to find my rise over my run, I'm going to start with my leftmost point and read to my rightmost point because we read graphs from left to right. So here I go down 2 and over 1. Okay, because I went down 2, it's a negative 2, and I went to the right one, which is a positive 1. So my rise was negative 2 and my run was 1. So the slope in this graph is negative 2. Okay. Now let's move over to our table. So what we want to do is find our rise, which is our y, or our change in y, over our change in x. So let's find our patterns here. Okay. I get from negative 7 to negative 6 by adding 1. I get from negative 6 to negative 5 by adding 1, from negative 5 to negative 4 by adding 1, and from negative 4 to negative 3 by adding 1. So my change in y is adding 1, a positive 1. Okay? Now let's find my change in x. I go from negative 2 to negative 1, that's adding 1. I go from negative 1 to 0 by adding 1, 0 to 1 by adding 1, and 0, or excuse me, 1 to 2 by adding 1. So my change in x is also 1. So my change in y over change in x, which is the same as rise over run, is positive 1 over positive 1. So my slope in my chart is a positive 1. So although this one is positive and this one is negative, because we're looking for steepness, we know that 2 is steeper than 1. Okay? So already we're liking function 1. Out of 1 and 2, we like number 1 better. Okay? So let's move on here. Function 3, as I said before, we know this is in y equals mx plus b form. So right here, we can see right away what the slope is. So the slope in this one is m equals 3. Okay, so it's positive, but we don't care really about positive and negative. We just want to know how steep the line is. So it's the biggest number that we're looking for. So Right now, function 3, because 3 is bigger than 2 here. This 3 is bigger than 2, so we like function 3 more. Okay? So let's keep going, just to be sure. Here it just straight up tells us the slope is negative 4, which means, again, we're not, we don't care about negative versus positive. We just want to know about how steep the line is. Okay? So we want the biggest number. So 1, 2, 3, and 4. We like function 4 because 4 is the steepest number. So this answer will be function 4. Okay, the next question says, which functions have graphs with y-intercepts greater than negative 3? Okay, check all that apply. So we need to go back now and look at each of these functions and find the y-intercepts. So the first question was asking about slope. The second question here is asking about y-intercepts. So the y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis. So here's the y-axis. So I'm going to go down here, and I see that the y-intercept, or b, is 3. Okay? So right away, we get to check this question. Is a positive 3 greater than negative 3? Yes, it is. So I would mark function 1. So let's check the next function. Now this one, we can't see a graph. But we know it's crossing the y-axis, which means we know the x value of this point because we would label it 0, 3. The x value is 0. So here we can look on our graph, or excuse me, on our chart to see where, where x equals 0, y equals negative 5. Okay, so this 
intercept, y intercept is negative 5. So is negative 5 greater than 3? Excuse me, is negative 5 greater than negative 3? No, so I'm not going to mark function 2. Okay? Function 3. Again, y equals mx plus b. We can see our y-intercept right there. Our y-intercept on this function is 1. So is 1 greater than negative 3? Yes, it is. So I can go ahead and mark this function. Okay? And last but not least, this one tells us what the intercept is. So the intercept of function 4 is negative 2. Now, is negative 2 greater than negative 3? It actually is. So function 4 also is true. So every function except for 2 in this case has an intercept greater than negative 3. Okay? All right, last but not least, it says which function has the graph with the y-intercept farthest from 0? So when you think about a graph, just really quickly, when you think about a graph, here is the 0 point. So the farthest one, if we have one here, 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 and here, the farthest one doesn't have to be positive. It's just the farthest from zero. So for example, this negative one is farther than this positive one, okay? So we're just looking for the farthest distance from zero. So let's go ahead and look up here. This one is a positive three, which means it's three spaces away from zero. This one is a negative five, which means it's five spaces away from zero, just in the opposite direction. This one's only one space and this one's two spaces. So clearly, when you have an intercept of negative five and you're five spaces away, five is bigger than three and one and two. So I'm gonna go ahead and say function two for the third answer. And there you have it. That's all of your questions. So you wanna find the slope and the intercept in each different representation of this function before you can answer the questions. 